Hey, what's up? This is Mr. Hunk Hans, and this is Sex Starved Singapore. What I'm going to be talking about today, and what I want you to understand by the end of this talk, are the different evolutionary mating strategies for men and for women, and what that means for you, and how you should live your life to make use of this reality. I'm going to start out with the guys. There are two different strategies for guys, and it depends on where you find yourself on the value scale as a man. Now, some men are on the low end of the value scale. And that's, look at this property behind me. Look at this. This has weeds growing in on it. It's not a very fancy place relative to where I am. You know, it's, it's abandoned. It's kind of, kind of a crappy little spot here. Some guys pop out and they're kind of low value. And then life hits them with even more shit. They have terrible parents. They go to a bad school. They have the wrong ideas in their heads. Maybe they're like, they're like full on communists, you know, and they're like, I deserve shit. And they're like the victim the entire life. Maybe they have bad friends. Maybe they get into drugs, right? And at the end of a couple of years, their life kind of looks like that, right? So what do you do? If you pop out or, you know, through a certain number of years, your life looks like that as a man. What do you do as far as getting a woman? Well, I'll tell you what you do. <laughs> if you want a woman to step foot on that property, what you have to do is you have to give her a really good deal, a long-term deal. So you'd have to, like, if you wanted to sign up a woman to come onto that property and to, like, have a relationship with you, what you'd have to do is to say, you know what, I'm going to give you this thing for super cheap. You can live here so cheap, so, so, so cheap, you know, to, like, have somebody come in and move in, right? What that, what that, holy shit, I thought that was... Goddamn snake, but it's not. <laughs> All right. What, what that means is if you're a low-value guy, what you need to do is you need to make a really sweet deal with a woman. And what a woman wants are two different things. She wants really good genes for her children, one. And two, she wants an excellent environment to raise those children so that they actually you know, do well and succeed and uh, you know, can have children of their own. Because if you have amazing babies with amazing genetics, like little Albert Einstein's or little, little uh, uh, magazine cover babies, but then they get you know, eaten by wolves, it doesn't matter. As far as your genetics, what you want is children that get passed along, that are healthy, and that know how to mate. That know how to survive and they know how to mate. That's what success looks like from an evolutionary perspective, right? So that's what women want. To get a woman onto that property, you have to be like, hey, Hey girl, hey girl, what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna stick around. Unlike a lot of the guys that you may be attracted to, a lot of the really hot guys who are not dependable, what I'm gonna do as a guy is I'm gonna do it different. Or depending on our society, you're just gonna like do it as most guys are doing it now because a lot of guys think that they're on the low value end of the scale and they probably are. But what you're gonna do is say, I'm gonna stick around and I'm gonna provide our children with a lot of resources per children. So let's say we have, you know, 10, 15 back in the day, back in the hunter-gatherer days, like 10, 15 children would be like the norm. So like, I'm going to stick around. I'm going to train those little kids. I'm going to make sure that when I hunt, I bring it back to you and not some other random girl, or I'm not going to like share it with my friends. I'm going to bring it back to you and the children, and they're going to have the resources they need to grow up strong, to succeed. And the girl's going to look at that and be like, yeah, you know, I could go off and sleep with like Brad Pitt, you know, like the leader of the tribe or whatever. The guy who looks amazing. But the problem with that kind of guy is that I know he's not going to stick around. And yeah, I'm getting the good genes, that first part of what she wants, but I'm not getting that second part. I'm not getting the resources and the stability and the environment to raise those children, right? That's going to that's gonna make sure that those genes can actually get passed along. So... She's going to look at those two options. She's going to just be like, yeah, low value guy, you know, kind of the, the broken down lot kind of guy. All right. Sounds good. Let's make a deal. Now I'm walking up to here towards uh, orchard road here to show you what's on the other end of the spectrum. So, you know, you roll the dice, you might have a property like this, or you might end up like Brad Pitt. You might end up having a super fancy property where everybody wants to be there. You might be the guy who just has a way with words. You might be the guy who has great genetics. Some guys can build muscle a little bit easier. Some guys are just, you know, a little bit faster, a little bit smarter, a little bit funnier. 
uh, you know, some guys just have a lot of things going for them. You know, they're just like a, a joy to be around, right? They sort of, you know, hit women's emotional buttons. Um, so that kind of person, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there in a minute. You're gonna see exactly what that's like, but you know, you know yourself, right? Like, where do you like to go on a, you know, on a Saturday afternoon when you're with your friends? You probably go to like the mall or something like that. You know, it de depends on you. Some, some people like to go camping and stuff, but there's a lot higher foot traffic at a mall than like, you know, some, some random, some random, uh, the same like square footage uh, of a national park or something like that, right? There's just a lot of people going all along like those fancy shops because that's where the action and the excitement is. So that's what it's like to be a, a high value guy. You pop out, women want to be with you, a lot of opportunity, everybody's sort of, you know, vying for your attention. So the strategy, so again, we're talking about mating strategies for men and for women and how they differ. The mating strategy for the high value guy, the other end of the spectrum, is to sleep with a lot of women. And like I said, they're not very dependable, you know, and uh, they're not very dependable. So let's say uh, a high, uh, like a high status guy, the guy who just has great looks and he's pretty smart, you know, like the, the lawyer uh, cover model kind of guy. Let's say, let's say he could sleep with, I don't know, 300 women in his lifetime. And uh, so he could sleep with uh, 300 women. And like, what, is, what does that mean for that guy? If you sleep with 300 women, you can't spend that much time investing in every relationship and in every offspring and every child, right? You just can't do it. I mean, there's, there's time constraints because instead of like sitting down, like settling down and uh, investing in a child that you might have just created from a sexual experience, your body doesn't know about condoms. So your body has sex and it's like, oh, I guess there's a baby. And then at that point, your brain starts to, starts to process based on how attractive you are. And you're like, well, if I'm fucking attractive, if I'm fucking high value, I could stick around or I could just go and sleep with somebody else like in an hour or in two hours, you know? You could be the Genghis Khan of the world. So it's like the Genghis Khan strategy or like the loser guy strategy. So if you happen to be more of the Genghis Khan type, the best strategy, you know, evolutionarily speaking, is to, is to uh, sleep with a lot of women and not to invest heavily in any of them. That's gonna give you a lot of babies. What it's not gonna give you is a high percentage of babies who succeed. Because you're not providing those resources, you know, in the evolutionary psychology uh, way of thinking, a lot of those children are gonna get like eaten by tigers or something like that, eaten by lions on the savanna. They're gonna be undernourished. They're not gonna be trained properly by their father because they're not gonna have a father figure because you're not gonna be around. So you're gonna have a lot of babies, but they're all gonna be kind of like fuck ups or a certain percentage, of, a higher percentage of them will be fuck ups or like dead because they didn't have enough food or they got attacked. Um, but because you have like 300 babies, remember that guy, he's got 300 babies, let's say 15% of them do well, that's still a lot. That's still like 45 kids versus the loser kind of guy who let's say he makes that deal with the woman and he has 10 or 15 kids and let's say 75% of those uh, uh, do well. You know, he can protect them properly. He can provide for them properly. You know, that guy has like 12, whatever, babies. And then the, the high value guy has got like 45. So, so they're both good strategies, but it depends on where you are on the spectrum. And let me clarify what I'm talking about here. This isn't like a conscious strategy. I'm gonna switch hands. This isn't a conscious strategy of like, you know, I'm gonna sit down and like pull out a piece of paper and, uh, you know, and make a plan for how I'm gonna get the most babies. Because if that was how we actually operated, everybody would be lining up at, uh, at sperm banks, right? That's the best way to like get lots of babies is to have an amazing profile as a sperm donor and just to like donate sperm every day. I mean, that's the way to do it. That's not what guys do. That's not how we make our decisions. What, what, what this comes down to is what smells good to you as a person, right? What's, what smells good? Like what, what smells like bacon on a Saturday morning to you, right? If you're that high value guy, sleeping around with everybody just smells so good. It's like, oh uh, yeah, well of course you would do that. Of course, who doesn't like that, right? That's what that guy is thinking. If you're the low value guy, what smells good to you is the quiet life back there in the neighborhood. That's like what smells good. You're like, you know what? Just stability, I just wanna find one girl. It doesn't even, she doesn't even have to be that pretty. I'll take whatever I can get. And I just, I just want some kids, I want stability. I don't wanna to have to worry about all this dating shit. 
I just want like the quiet life. You know, I just want something simple. That's what smells good to you. You know, you might not know why it smells good to you. Well, it's probably because of your social standing as a man. And that's what's making one strategy smell good versus another strategy. So, those that's for the guys. That's for the men of the world. Two strategies, and you're going to find yourself somewhere on that spectrum. Women <laughs> have, have something... Depends on how you look at it, either simpler or far more complex. Women don't really find themselves so much on one end of the, on, on a spectrum. There's more of a static strategy that's really, really good. Because women want to raise their children over here in the quiet neighborhood, but they want to go over here to the flashy bang bang whiz, whiz pizam, you know, kind of, kind of environment to get their children right, to get those genes, because over here is the good genes. These are the Brad Pitts of the world. I'm going to run across the road. The Brad Pitts of the world have the amazing genes, but they're not going to stick around for you, right? So the best strategy for a woman is to get those genes, but then to raise those genes in a comfortable, stable environment. So what that means in practical terms is that you make that deal with the high value guy. Sorry, with the low value guy. You make you make that deal with the low value guy of like, yeah, let's let's do this thing. Let's I'll have 10 kids. I'll only have them with you. They're, they'll be your children and you know, you go off. You uh you uh <laughs> you hunt, you bring the food back. Great. You know, we'll do that. But then so that's, that's good. That secures you that, that you, you sign that contract, you know, like that agreement. I mean, it's not a contract, obviously, but you make an agreement with a guy and uh, you get that, you get the resources, you get the promise of resources. Some guys cheat, but you know, that's, that's your best bet for resources. So you got that going for you as a woman. Then what do you do? Then you go off while your guy's hunting woolly mammoth and you go over here to the Orchard Road and you meet a guy who's high value, who's the kind of Brad Pitt type, and you get your little, you know, designer uh, magazine cover baby, right? So what does that mean? It means that you have a relationship with a low value guy, and then you go off and you get a baby from a high value guy, and the low value guy, hopefully, this is, you know, kind of the crux of the uh, plan, the low value guy hopefully doesn't know any better, right? That's like the best situation for a woman. She has all of the security, all the emotional, you know, the comfort. She has the resources. She has, um, you know, the family life that she sort of, that smells good to her. But she also has the bad boy experiences that smell good to her at different parts of her life and at different parts of the month, right? So she gets the best of both worlds in that situation. What you, you know, a very, like a super common theme in drama, in, uh, and just sort of like conversations is like, what do women want, right? They want those two things. They want the good genes, but they also want the, the uh, like reliable environment to raise those genes and to like raise those children properly. So there's two things. She wants the bad boy, but she also wants the good guy. Two things, you know, right now British, uh, what's her name? Bridget Jones's Diary is coming out and there's these uh, movie posters, Bridget Jones in the middle and there's the like boring dependable guy on the left and then on the right is the sort of, uh, you know, not rock star, he's, he's old now, but he's, you know, he's got like the uh, five o'clock shadow, kind of like bad boy type, maybe artist type, and she's in the middle. That's exactly the, uh, the situation that women face, is they want both things. And the, the strategy, the mating strategy that gets you both things is to get the babies from the high value guy and then to get the relationship and the resources and the security from the low value guy. So that's just how it is, that's reality. Um, you know, this comes from evolutionary psychology, basically like different Nash equilibri equilibriums that emerge, you know, in these sort of situations. Um, as adults and as men in particular, you need to understand what is the, the best, the most accurate model of the world and then execute on that. Because if your model of the world is, hey, we're all living in Disneyland mode, you know, I just find my little princess, 
and uh, and that's it. I give her, I give her, you know, I, I kiss her on the lips, the, the shoe foot, the, the the shoe fits, and it's all good. If that's your model of the world, if that's how you're operating, you, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have a terrible life, right? If your model of the world is to say, no, that's actually not how it works. How it works is what I just said. Women want two different things. Then you can plan and execute to get what you want, right? So let me, let me talk about that. Let me talk about, let me give you a tip as a man for how do you navigate what seems to be a shitty situation. You know, it's, it's not like it's shitty, but it's like, uh, it's, it just doesn't line up to what we're told growing up. It seems shitty, you know, it's just reality. It seems shitty, but anyway, so like how do you deal with reality, right? So you roll the dice when you're born, and you're either here on Orchard Road, where everybody, you know, all, all the attractive people are, everybody wants to be here. You know, your, your rent, you know, if you want to uh, charge thousands of dollars a month for some property, if you want to put in like a Louis Vuitton store or whatever, you can, because you got the high value property. If you roll the dice and you're here, what do you do? But if you roll the dice and you're over at the neighborhood over there, what do you do? Well, let's, basically, if you're the high value guy and you're here, you don't have that many issues. You can sort of do whatever you want. The best thing you want to do is you want to get here. You want to increase the value of your property. So if you're over at that little shitty plot where we started, that's how you pop out and you're like, shit, I want to be here where I have choices, where I have options, where people want to be around me, right? How do you do that? Well, luckily as guys, our value is not just like, you know, how we look. Like looks are important because looks uh, reflect how, like how, you know, like immunity, they reflect um, like how strong you are. So, you know, like the, the V shape for men is desirable and that reflects strength, right? And strength traditionally, you know, like evolutionarily is a very important char characteristic. That means you can run faster. That means you can, uh, you know, carry more stuff back to the, uh, back to the camp, back to your family. That means you're a better provider, right? So, so that kind of stuff is fixed. You can't really do too much about that. I mean, you know, you can get more of a VHA from like working out and stuff. But a lot of the value that is pegged on men in our society is based on their understanding of social situations. So the, the influencer type guy, the guy who can get people to follow him is very valuable in our society. And that is not genetic. 100%. You can learn those skills. You can adapt. You can train yourself. You can put the right mindsets in your head to be more of a leader and to be more of a high value guy. So you can increase the value of your property. You can do that. And you should be doing that as a guy. So what that's going to do is you start out over there, the shitty piece of land. You're going to inch your way slowly and painfully into this sort of area where more and more people are paying attention to you you get more and more attention and you can charge more for your property, you know? You can, uh, you, have, you have more cards when it comes to negotiating a relationship that you want. At that point, you know, you can open up a Louis Vuitton store and, you know, make a sort of a commercial type enterprise. You know, you can make it a situation where you got girls coming in every 10 minutes and they're like, ooh, look at these cute bags and they walk out, you know? What I'm, what I'm uh, analogizing, if that's a word, is like casual sex. You can have as much casual sex as you want. You can have as many casual relationships as you want once you have a high value as a man. Or you can be like, you know what? I'm just gonna go the, a different way and I'm gonna open up. Well, I'm pointing over here, but there's a, some really nice condos over here. What you can do as a man is you can be like, you know, I could open up the Louis Vuitton shop, have girls in and out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have like a, a beautiful, prime location house or like a beautiful prime location haunt condo penthouse kind of thing which basically means you're gonna you could have lots of girls but you're gonna settle for somebody that you really like and you're gonna build a long-term relationship with them right it's it's your choice once you are a higher value guy it's your choice what sort of relationship you want to get into when you're over at the shitty plot of land if you put up a condo there nobody's gonna be in it nobody's gonna want to be there right? If you open up a Louis Vuitton store, not going to work. You're like, hey, I'm a player. Like, no one's like, I'm not having any of that. Once you're here, you have the options. So as a man, you want to get here first. And then second, 
you want to figure out what's what what smells right to you you know does having a lot of girls in and out of your life smell right okay try that go for it so, you know see how long it lasts it might last your entire life it might not does having a longer term relationship smell good putting up the condo and sort of having more roots and more like more of a family life does that smell good cool go for that that's your option you can do that you know so for a guy that's <laughs> those are basically the two options for a woman I mean, the, the, the standard, uh, the standard uh, uh, strategy still applies. It's like, you know, have fun with the highest value guy you can and uh, settle for the highest low value guy you can. And, you know, maybe kind of cheat to get, the, to get the right genetics while still retaining the, uh, the security of the low value guy. Now with paternity tests, it's not as much of an option. I don't know, honestly, I don't know a better strategy for a woman, like some, like a different Nash equilibrium, you know, that sort of makes sense. So if you do, leave a comment, uh, send me a note. I'd love to hear about a different strategy that actually makes sense for a woman. Hey, and one more thing, I'm at the Hilton, I'm checking out, but I was just in the elevator, I gotta say this one thing, I was just in the elevator with this guy who was like a super nice guy, like uh, probably like 45 or something like that. And um, I asked him what was in his bag. It looked like some golf clubs or something. But he's like, no, it was, it was uh, something so that he could hang uh, like a Chinese brush that his wife wants him to hang on the wall. Uh, it's like some sort of like uh, hanging contraption, like some sort of like mounting system. And he looks so stressed out. Like I, I started talking to him and he was just sort of like, yeah. And then, you know, I got into it and he was like, yeah, I got to do this thing because it's, it's a hard move. And my wife is all, da, 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 you know, like she's all basically she's being a bitch about something. Um, I was talking to this guy yesterday and he just like out of the blue started talking to me because I was talking with the um, the hotel staff about you know, like I'm going to Thailand uh, tomorrow. So he was like, yeah, you gotta go to Chiang Mai. There's elephants there, it's amazing. Like, don't miss Chiang Mai. It's like excited, sort of engaged, like a nice guy, he had a nice vibe about him. And now he's, you know, he's doing chores for his girl. He's doing chores for, you know, cause he's in this relationship and that, that sort of dynamic, the dynamic of you feel like you gotta, you know, you gotta do all this shit that you don't wanna do. I don't call that like compromise. I call that, you know, th there's, like for complicated issues like this, there's always a fine line between, you know, what are you what are you negotiating as a man and a woman, and when are you just being pussy whipped? When are you like, I know I can't do better, or I'm so stuck into, you know, following what society says that I just I gotta do what this girl says because I don't have any other options. I can't I can't divorce her. I can't get rid of her. I can't make this relationship work. She's got my balls. You know, there's another another friend of mine who's. He's like, where are my balls? Where are my balls? Like, we know where your balls are. Your wife has your balls. Uh, if, you know, if you don't cultivate your value as a guy, if you don't increase the value of that plot of land that chance gives you, you will be looking for your balls your whole life. And you're going to be the nervous kind of guy in the elevator who's running errands for his wife when, you know, he's on vacation in Singapore. Like, do you want to be that guy? Do you want that life? Or do you want to cultivate, as a guy, a higher value property? To have like a, a nice place where people want to be there, you know? The people want to be in your life. The people that you choose to be a part of your life, they're glad that they're there, you know? That's what happens when you cultivate your value as a guy. I'll leave you with that thought. Cheers. This has been Mr. Hunkans, and this is Sex Starved Singapore. You can find us at sexstarved.sg, or you can subscribe here for more of this. Cheers.